everyone, today I will be going over interatomic bonds. So I will be going over ionic bonds, covalent bonds, metallic bonds. I will be talking about what they are, um, explaining how you get them, um, and explaining just how the bonds work on a fundamental level. We begin by looking at the periodic table. So I'm sure you're somewhat familiar with this. I took this periodic table. This is the periodic table that you find at the back of your formula sheet at the back of exams if you're following the standard South African syllabus. So when you get to your end of your exams, you can expect a periodic table that will look just like this without the colors. In the On this periodic table, there are three different sections that I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, metals, non-metals, and in between, some semi-metals, also known as metalloids. So we're not going to worry about them right now. We are going to be discussing metals and non-metals and their combinations. Can you remember which of these are metals and which of these are non-metals? The correct um, answer, the green, is non-metal, and the red is metal. Okay, so we know we've got metals and we've got these non-metals on our periodic table. And so we're going to talk about how they bond to each other and to themselves and what sort of bonds this creates. Okay. So, um, so there's three types of bonds that we're going to be discussing today. And there's, it makes sense, it's just combinations of these two. So, our first bond we'll talk about is what happens when you take a non-metal and you combine it with another non-metal. Two greens being combined. That is called a covalent bond. Let's have a look at the shape of an atom to recap. So an atom has positive protons and neutral neutrons in the center of the atom. And these are all bunched together like that. And then on the outside, floating around it, are electrons. And so you end up with layers of electrons. And I'll make another video discussing how these electrons layer, how many electrons like to live on one layer, and how this affects your atom. But what's important for now is that the very outermost layer of electrons, the electrons on the very outside of the diagram, are called valent electrons. Covalent bonds tells us a little bit about how these reactions work. These reactions work the, the bonds work by when you've got two atoms that are both non-metallic. Both of them have electrons on the outside on that valence shell, and they decide to share electrons. So they allow their orbitals to overlap and they share these outermost electrons. And so that is why they are covalently bonded, because they share their valence 
electron. And the reason for this is both of them are non-metals. So neither of them wants to give away electrons and neither of them wants to take electrons. Neither of them want to properly donate anything away or rip off the other um, rip off the other atom. So they end up sharing in the space in between where there's this overlap so electrons in between are shared okay so that is your covalent bonds and that's how you remember what they are about okay then you have bonds between non-metals and metals so between green and red non-metal plus metal and what happens over here so you can see generally your metals are on the left hand side of your periodic table and non-metals are generally on the right hand side and so metals like lithium over there Li lithium, if you look at its outermost electrons, it has one electron. But if you look at, say, fluorine on the opposite side, it has. seven outermost electrons and I will show you how you can determine this in another video that should pop up on screen now if I have created that video what happens over here so you can see fluorine has seven electrons lithium has one and so what ends up happening is this lone electron from lithium is taken by fluorine. So this is electron transfer and the reason why this happens is because of something called the octet rule which I can go over more in depth in another video but generally um, atoms desire to have their valence outermost shell, this outermost orbital, to have eight electrons. So they want to have eight electrons, but if they can't, then they would rather have none. So your metals would rather lose one electron or two electrons. They would rather lose the couple of electrons that they do have and donate it to your non-metals which will use it to completely fill their outermost level whereas your metals just end up giving up with that outermost level and remember lithium is going to be fine because we're just talking about the outermost level it's still got an inner level over there that is actually full that is metals and non-metals and this is called ionic bonds and the reason for this is what do we call lithium once it has lost that little electron we call it a lithium ion because it's a version of lithium that is almost the same that has a different number of electrons and so lithium forms an ion and fluorine also forms an ion and so fluorine has gained an electron and so it is shown like that 
because electrons are negatively charged, so the whole fluorine gains one negative charge. And lithium, which has lost that electron, becomes lithium plus, saying that it is now positively charged because it has less electrons and electrons are negatively charged. So then you have a negatively charged ion, which is called a called an anion, and a positively charged ion, which is called a cation. And the way I remember this is when you are when you see a cat. I like cats, and so when I see cats, that makes me feel positive. It makes me happy. And people watch cat videos on the internet all the time. You might be watching, wanting to watch a cat video right now instead of this one. And I wouldn't blame you because cats make you feel really positive. Whereas when you're feeling negative, so this ion is feeling really negative right now. And so when we ask this ion, who are you, little ion? What does the ion say? He says... I'm just an ion. I'm nothing special. I'm just an ion. So that's just a, a bit of a joke, but it's how I like to remember it. That your negative ions are anions, your positive ions are cations. That's what forms during ionic Bonds. And so now we've got this negative ion, this anion, and this cation. What happens between them is they are attracted. Because if you can think of magnets or many other things in physics, positive and negative, they end up attracting each other. Because this one has a negative charge, this one has a positive charge, they attract each other. And so they can end up forming a whole new molecule like that by just being attracted to each other. And so that is what gets produced in ionic bonding. But sometimes, depending on the conditions, they might just stay as separate floating ions, depending on the external circumstances. Okay, so we've gone over non-metals combined with non-metals gives us covalent bonds, and non-metal combined with metal gives us ionic bonds. So the last type, I'm sure you can figure out what the last one is going to be, it's going to be metal plus metal. And so the name of this is simply... They don't overcomplicate it, it's simply metallic bonds. And so, what happens with metallic bonds? So, when you think of metals in their purest form, you probably think of bars, ingots, stuff like that. And the reason for that, the reason why metal is like that, is because of how these metallic bonds form, which is, so we went over earlier that the atom of a metal, it has the protons and neutrons, and it's going to have just one electron on the outside, or two, and so when they meet each other, when two metals meet, they don't have enough electrons to share, and they don't have enough electrons that you could even rip off and use just individually. And so what they do instead is they get rid of those outermost electrons and they let them float around randomly. So they still have the inner layers, which are smaller, but these outer electrons float around randomly around all of these metal cores. And so, that's what a metal ingot is. It's got a, this dense core 
of protons and neutrons and the inner electrons and then floating around this floating in something called a sea of delocalized so it means it just doesn't have a location it doesn't have a home these are these these electrons float around without a home it's a sea of delocalized valence electrons this is why metals are such good conductors of electricity because the electricity is just the movement of electrons and as metal has so many free floating electrons around the place it allows for really easy collisions between electrons it allows electrons to flow through really easily you end up with metal being really tough forming these really solid bonds together in these big solid clumps and being a really good conductor because of that so those are the three primary types of atomic bonds so i hope that was useful to you if you have any questions for me or any requests for what i should cover next then leave a comment below if you enjoyed the video then like and subscribe because i would really appreciate the support and it would encourage me to keep making these videos if you want to contact me for private tutoring then you can look in the description or the link to my website but more than anything thank you for being here and remember you're smarter than you think